Hello, Eagle fans. I've got to tell you that I sometimes get more irons in the fire than I contend. And this particular video is about two months overdue from sending out to you. So I want to uh, send it today because uh, it has some great information for you. Our ground crew has witnessed many juvenile, immature, and sub-adult bald eagles in the territory this year. And while the eagles pictured here were photographed by Mike and Terry last year, the rest of the eagles shown in this video were photographed this year. For those of you who are unfamiliar with those terms and what those eagles might look like, on this picture, 1A and 1B is a juvenile eagle in its first year, and it generally has dark brown plumage. The eagle number two there is an immature eagle. Number three is an immature eagle as well. Number four is on the cusp between immature and sub-adult. Now there's much more to these terms and how they're determined. We'll go over that a different day. In today's video, I would like to mainly focus on one particular sub-adult bald eagle that you're seeing here as the main part of our story. And I'd like to thank Terry, uh, who is on our ground crew, and of course the founder of Friends of the Reading Eagles. I'd like to thank her for this photography and videography that you're going to see today. Here's a magnified view of the same eagle. This is a sub-adult, meaning that it doesn't have its definitive white head and white tail plumage that you would expect out of a fully mature adult. This eagle is probably three and a half, maybe four and a half. And if it is four and a half, it might be uh, either river or sky. And those two eaglets were hatched in 2018 to Liberty and her previous mate, Spirit. A couple of the quickest ways to tell that this is a sub-adult eagle is that dark brown area called a band or a tail band along the base of the tail. When the bird is mature, those dark areas will go away after probably the next molt. And also the uh, dark feathers behind the eye. Those feathers are called the auriculars. And a few dark feathers across the crown of the head. These are more photos that Terry was able to get of the same sub-adult bald eagle. It is a magnificent bird and hung around the territory for many days. Terry was quick to notice that this particular sub-adult has a very significant and noticeable notch in the brown collar feathers where the brown feathers uh, protrude up into the white neck feathers. I believe this is the same sub-adult that Terry caught many days, and you'll see some uh, video and other stills, I believe, here in the rest of this feature. Here is a picture of that sub-adult bald eagle hunting coots within the Sacramento River there. And this is a video that Terry was able to capture of that same sub-adult bald eagle hunting coots on the Sacramento River. It wasn't successful on this particular try, but it's always uh, fun to see how it is that they 
hot. So here's how Guardian handled the presence of the subadult eagle. And all of this is based on reports from the ground crew. Guardian was in a, a tree north of the nest, and that's Guardian there now. But he was in a tree north of the nest, and the subadult uh, flew over the top of him. So uh, the subadult lands in another tree close to the nest, and Guardian flies back to the nest, which is what you're seeing here. So Guardian's in the nest for about 12 minutes, and then this subadult does something crazy. It takes off from the tree and flies over to the nest tree. You'll see the tree sway right here. Terry caught it, and that subadult landed in the tree. It then took off, uh, went around. You'll see Guardian follow it here. And it lands in the tree again. You can see it shake. This time it's even closer. You can see the subadult and Guardian was still in the nest. Well, Guardian does a stare down with this subadult, but he does not vocalize. And Terry related that Liberty was not in the near vicinity at this time. Finally, Guardian had had enough of this eagle. I guess for whatever reason, uh, he didn't see it as enough of a threat to have to defend the nest. So he takes off. <laughs> Go figure. So here's an example of the way Liberty dealt with that subadult. This is Liberty, and she's been observing something, and I believe that in this case it was the subadult. And she goes to check it out and flies out to lay down the law. Here are a couple of videos that Terry got of Liberty soaring with the subadult. I don't know which is which, but Terry noticed in this instance that it was non-adversarial. In this video that Terry got, uh, the eagles seem to be chasing one another. Again, I don't know which is which, but it seems to me that they do change place as chaser and chasee several times. And uh, eagles are well known to do this. Because this is Liberty's territory, this chase may have very well been initiated by Liberty in an effort to show the subadult that it's her territory and what the limits are. Again, this subadult stayed in the territory for several days, so it was not run off. It has not been seen recently, uh, but other immature and juvenile eagles have been seen. As a wildlife photographer, you don't always get to pick the wildlife that's present or the light or the distance or the angle. But here's another beautiful picture from Terry of that same subadult in a gorgeous light and contrast. My thanks to Mike on our ground crew for the photographs of this different subadult that was photographed just today, February 12th. This is a very unusual subadult. I have zoomed this image in way too far, maybe even more than the original. 
pixel size, but I've done it to show why this appears to be such a strange sub-adult. The tail has a dark band along the base. You can probably see that. There is some darker feathers behind the eye in the auriculars. But the strangest thing about this, I have never seen a sub-adult with this much white in the head and so little yellow in the upper mandible and sear. Those being the top and uh, base or back of the beak. Well, I looked it up and the coloration in the beak and feet is caused by pigments known as carotenoids. And it says that uh, birds with dull colors in the beak and feet may be suffering from vitamin deficiencies due to diet or hormones. Go figure. This is just another example of the rather high number of juveniles, immatures, and subadults in the territory this year. I have a very special Eagle guest coming up in my next couple of videos. That's all I can disclose now, but you will definitely want to stay tuned for these upcoming productions. Until next time, be safe and be well.